Does ethanol cause corrosion in a carburetor and does fuel stabilizer help prevent it? Today we're going to find out with proof whether or not ethanol is a problem. I have some fuel that's been aging in some containers, so let's go take a look at these samples and see what we can discover. We'll look at fuel that's been contaminated with water to see if fuel stabilizer prevented corrosion. We'll also inspect carburetor parts that have been soaking in fuel for nearly a year to see if it's caused any damage. We'll see if we can get an engine to run with fuel that's nearly a year old. The six jars to the left have fuel in them that's been contaminated with water, and inside each container is some aluminum, the type of aluminum that's in a carburetor. The containers to the right include fuels that have different carburetor components in them. Some of these containers had stabilizer, some of them did not. So up next, we're going to look at the first six containers that had water contamination with the different types of fuel in them to see if any sort of corrosion occurred with the metal. This is the E85 with no stabilizer. This is E85 with stabilizer. Now the stabilizer I used is this Lucas Safeguard Ethanol Fuel Conditioner with stabilizers. It's specifically designed for E10, E15, and E85. According to the manufacturer, this product was designed to help prevent corrosion and degradation in ethanol-based fuels. Safeguard prevents the harmful corrosion in the fuel systems often associated with the use of ethanol fuels. Helps protect your motor from the harmful side effect of alcohol combustion. Ethanol is hygroscopic, which means it attracts water. And unfortunately, this fuel had a little bit of water contamination in it. So if you have an open container of ethanol, it's going to attract water and absorb it. And as a result, you're gonna end up with water contamination. So the question is, did the fuel stabilizer prevent the corrosion? So let's take a close look inside of each one of these containers to see if any corrosion occurred. This is E85 without any sort of fuel stabilizer in it. And is there corrosion? <laughs> Absolutely. The metal I placed in this container nine months ago, along with a little bit of water, has a lot of corrosion on it. And trust me, this fuel smells terrible. I do not recommend ever leaving ethanol-based fuel in a carburetor for any period of time, or it will cause damage. In a minute, we're gonna take this out, but let's go ahead and look at the E85 with stabilizer to see if the stabilizer by Lucas actually prevented the corrosion. This E85 has a Lucas additive in it, and did it prevent corrosion? <laughs> Absolutely not. Unfortunately, there's a lot of corrosion on this aluminum. The only difference is what's left has a different color to it. The E85 without the stabilizer does not have this golden color to it. I'm going to go ahead and remove the metal from each container and we'll take a closer look at them. This is a container that does not have the stabilizer in it, so I'm going to take the aluminum out. Wow, look at that. Look at the buildup on this aluminum. Definitely causing some corrosion. This is definitely eating into the aluminum and leaving like a jelly-like material on top of the aluminum. The ethanol has eaten through the paint on the back side of this metal and the paint is flaking off. Additionally, it's causing corrosion underneath the paint. So the question is, does ethanol cause corrosion? Without a doubt, it does cause corrosion. Does fuel stabilizer prevent corrosion from occurring? In a minute, I'll dry this off and we'll take a closer look at the aluminum to see how much damage has occurred. Let's see if fuel stabilizer prevented the E85 from doing damage. This is the E85 with stabilizer and as you can see, it is a huge mess inside this container. There is definitely a lot of corrosion that's taken place on this aluminum. Obviously, the fuel stabilizer did not prevent corrosion. So let's take this aluminum out and take a closer look at it. 85 with a fuel stabilizer does not prevent corrosion. As you can see, there's definitely some corrosion on this aluminum. There's some paint flake that's taking place coming off this aluminum. So the ethanol did penetrate this paint and is down to the aluminum, causing corrosion. I'm going to dry these off with a paper towel. We'll take a closer look at each one of them. The piece of metal to the right had the fuel stabilizer, the one to the left did not. And as you can see, they both have this white chalky appearance, which is corrosion to the aluminum. So ethanol-based fuels will cause corrosion even with a fuel stabilizer. This is E10 gasoline. The container on the left did not have the fuel stabilizer in it. The container on the right did have the stabilizer. So let's take a closer look at it. This is E10 gasoline that did not have a fuel stabilizer. And as you can see, there is a lot of corrosion that is formed on this aluminum. This has done a lot of damage. I'm really surprised at how quickly it worked. In only nine months, a lot of damage has taken place. So let's see if the fuel stabilizer helped the E10 gasoline. So did the fuel stabilizer help? Absolutely. There's definitely less corrosion on the piece of aluminum that was treated with the fuel stabilizer than the piece that was not treated. With that being said, there is still some corrosion that is forming on the bottom of this aluminum, so it has caused some damage. The container on the left has the stabilizer, the container on the right does not. And both of these containers have the non-ethanol fuel. What's very interesting is that these containers experience a lot less evaporation than the fuels with ethanol. This is a no ethanol fuel without stabilizer, and there is no indication of any sort of corrosion on this aluminum. 
It's very shiny and smooth, no sort of pitting, and no sort of white substance on the surface. So this no ethanol fuel without stabilizer, even though it had water contamination, did not cause any corrosion to the aluminum. Okay, the metal on the left did not have the fuel stabilizer. The fuel on the right did. There isn't any corrosion on either piece of metal, even though both pieces of metal had water contamination. So if you're using non-ethanol fuel, your carburetor is safe from the type of corrosion that ethanol causes. I'm gonna go ahead and dry these off and we'll see if there's any sort of white chalky appearance. The E85 seemed to cause an equal amount of corrosion with the treated and the untreated fuel. The E10 with stabilizer actually did better than the fuel that did not have the stabilizer. There's quite a bit of corrosion on this metal. Now the fuel that did have the stabilizer still experienced some corrosion but not nearly as bad. The no ethanol fuel with and without stabilizer looked the same. There isn't any visible sign of corrosion. Both these containers had E85 in them. One of them had stabilizer, one of them did not. Now these fuels were not contaminated with any sort of moisture. I have a climate controlled shop and these containers were stored inside of a cabinet inside the shop. And as you can see there isn't any fuel left in them. Both the fuel with and without the stabilizer seems to have some significant issues with regard to causing corrosion. This is the piece of metal that had the fuel stabilizer. I don't know what's on it, but look at all that corrosion. There's been a lot of damage done to this piece of metal. So there wasn't any water inside this fuel. At least I didn't add any and it still caused damage. The container that had the E85 fuel in it without the stabilizer is also a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and dump it out. Look at all that corrosion has taken place. What a mess. I don't know what all this goop is, but it's a byproduct of ethanol. Inside each of these containers, I included different carburetor and parts. We're gonna come back to these later in the video. Both these containers have E10 fuel in them. The one on the left has stabilizer, the one on the right does not. I'm gonna go ahead and take the contents out of each container. The E10 with stabilizer appears to have a very, very small amount of corrosion on it. So I'm gonna let this dry out and we'll come back to it in just a minute. This fuel did not have a stabilizer in it. There appears to be a very small amount of corrosion beginning on this metal. We'll come back to the other components that were inside this container later in the video. These containers have the non-ethanol fuel in it. Let's empty out these containers and take a closer look. Components exposed to non-ethanol fuel with stabilizer. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion on this metal. This is the no ethanol fuel without stabilizer. I'm gonna dry this metal off. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion on this metal. This carburetor actually looks fairly decent on the outside. It's a little bit dirty, but when you take the bowl off, this thing has a lot of corrosion. I mean, just look at this. Once you remove the bowl, you can see there's a tremendous amount of corrosion and the damage is irreparable. This carburetor is ruined. Fuel injected systems designed for ethanol fuels don't experience this type of corrosion since modern vehicles are made of metals, seals, and rubber that's not affected by ethanol. So gasoline has been inside these containers for a year. The question remains, is this gasoline still good? This is E10 with stabilizer. E10 without stabilizer. Let's see if these fuels are still good. So fuel stabilizer did not prevent this fuel from going bad. This is non-ethanol fuel. The fuel on the left has stabilizer, the fuel on the right does not. This is fresh ethanol fuel. This is fresh non-ethanol fuel. Fuel definitely goes bad over time. I don't like providing subjective assessments unless I just have to do so. And this is one of these instances where I don't have a reliable way to measure the impact ethanol has had on these different rubber components. Everything does seem a little bit stiffer that's been exposed to ethanol-based fuel compared to the non-ethanol-based fuel. The E85 definitely seems a little stiffer than the E10, and the non-ethanol seems like it's the most flexible. This lawnmower is out of gasoline, and it should not start, but I'm going to try to get it to run anyway, just to make sure that the carburetor bowl is empty. This fuel is nearly a year old. It's E10 without stabilizer. We have just enough gasoline to get this engine running if it'll run. There was never any water contamination with this fuel.
I'm going to hit it with a little starting fluid to see if that'll help. Unfortunately, this old fuel is just not going to burn, so I'm going to have to drain out the carburetor and we'll try the next fuel. We'll see if we can make the E10 fuel with stabilizer work in this engine. Okay, the spark plug is definitely wet, it's just not burning. Okay, so the no ethanol without fuel stabilizer actually worked. I had to give it a little bit of a boost with some starting fluid. We tried the same thing with E10, giving a little starting fluid to get it to run. It did not run. Up next, we'll try the no ethanol with fuel stabilizer. It's been about 30 minutes since I ran this engine. I wanted to let it cool down. It's now at 74 degrees. I had to give it starting fluid a couple of times, but once it got going, it actually ran pretty well. Got about two minutes of run time out of that very small amount of fuel. If you use no ethanol fuel in your small engines, you have nothing to worry about. Obviously, it's not good to leave that fuel in the engine for more than a year, just because that fuel is definitely going to degrade. If you use ethanol fuel, will fuel stabilizer entirely prevent damage? Unfortunately, it will not. It'll still do damage, but not as severely as if you don't use any fuel stabilizer at all. I really have a lot of fun doing these videos. This video idea was suggested by viewers. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. I read and reply to as many comments as possible. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please take care and I look forward to next time.